Today we're going to be talking about how to find the area of the region enclosed by two polar curves, in other words, inside both of the curves. And in this particular problem, we've been given the polar equations r equals sine of 2 theta and r equals cosine of 2 theta. Now the first thing I like to do with any polar area problem is to sketch both curves so I know what kind of area I'm trying to find. And if you remember from previous videos where we've talked about sketching polar curves, the basic idea is that you want to set whatever's inside the trigonometric identity. In our case, it's 2 theta in both cases here, both equations. You want to set 2 theta equal to pi over 2 and then you want to solve for theta. So in our case, 2 theta equals pi over 2. Divide both sides by 2 to solve for theta, and we get theta equals pi over 4. Pi over 4 then becomes the increments with which we mark off our x-axis. We have an xy-coordinate plane here, and we mark off our x-axis in increments of theta. So we have pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, etc. So we mark those off, and then we want to sketch both of our curves on this xy-coordinate plane, checking the values of each curve at each increment, so 0 and then pi over 4, pi over 2, etc. So for example, sine of 2 theta here, we want to plot it, and it's the curve in green, we've already done it, but basically you want to plug 0 into your equation r equals sine of 2 theta. When you do, you get sine of 0, sine of 0 is 0, so you plot the point there at 0, 0. Then you plug in pi over 4, sine of 2 times pi over 4 gives you pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 according to your unit circle is 1, so you plot 1 right here and you just keep going. And when you do that for the sine curve, you get this curve right here which we've sketched in green. When you do it for the cosine curve, you get the curve sketched in blue. And the reason that we plot these on an xy coordinate plane first is because having this visual is going to make it a lot easier for us to plot our curve on a polar coordinate system. So now we come over here to the polar coordinate system and we've already sketched sine of 2 theta. And so what you do then to transfer the graph from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates is you start with the first point here that we found, 0, 0. So that translates easily to the polar coordinate system. You plot 0, 0 here at the origin. Then what you do is you come over here to the next point that we found, which was at pi over 4, 1. So you have here the angle pi over 4, the angle for theta, and we know that the distance away from the origin is 1. So basically we start at the origin and we swing out here and as we approach the angle pi over 4, we come out a distance of 1 from the origin. So this distance right here is a distance of 1. Then we're up here in our Cartesian coordinate system and as we come from the angle pi over 4 to the angle pi over 2, we curve back from 1 back to 0. So, as we're out here from pi over 4 and we're approaching the angle pi over 2, we come from a point of 1, we come back to a value of 0, which is back at the origin. So we plot these leaves like this, and as we keep going, what we see is that we get these leaves like this, and we just trace it around and we get the graph of sine. Now we can do the same thing with the cosine curve. We can transfer it from the Cartesian coordinate system to the polar coordinate system. You'll notice here that at the angle 0, we're out a distance from the origin of 1. So at the angle 0 here, we're out a distance from the origin of 1. So we'll call this 1 unit away from the origin. Then as we come here to the angle pi over 4, we're at 0, a 0 distance away from the origin, so we're back at the origin. What that means is that as we come here to the angle pi over 4 from 0, we approach this line here, we're going to curl back toward the origin. So we come like this, and we curl back toward the origin till we get there. Okay, so now between pi over 4 and pi over 2, right here, we come from 0 to negative 1. So as we move from pi over 4 to pi over 2, we move from 0 out to a distance of negative 1. Well, along this pi over 2 axis right here, positive 1 along the pi over 2 axis would be at this point right here. A distance of negative 1 for the angle pi over 2 would be the opposite direction, so right here. So in other words, we're just going to continue, and this curve should be natural. It should easily continue to the next point. So we come out to that point, and then from pi over 2 back to 3 pi over 4, you can see we come back to a distance of 0, we come back to the origin, and if we just continue with this, what we'll get is the same flower looking shape, 
but just rotated slightly. So this is the cosine version here. We'll come here and we'll just have these four petals like this back to the point where we started like that. So now what we realize is that the area enclosed by both curves are these petals right here, each of these petals. And what you can see is that there are two of them in each quadrant of our polar coordinate system. So that means that there are eight of them in total. So now that we know what the area of the region looks like, we need to go ahead and use our area formula to find area. The first thing we need to do is find limits of integration, alpha and beta. And the way that we do that is by setting our curves equal to each other to find points of intersection. So we'll set sine of two theta equal to cosine of two theta. They're both equal to r, so we can do that. We set them equal to each other and we need to solve this equation for theta. Well, the easiest way to solve this equation for theta is to keep in mind what we know about the unit circle. So if we look here at the unit circle, you'll remember that the x coordinate here along the outside, the x coordinate of each of these points is our value for cosine. The y coordinate is our value for sine. So what we want to figure out is where on our unit circle the sine value, the sine coordinate, the y coordinate, is equal to the cosine value or the x coordinate. Well, you'll notice that each of these coordinate points, the values are different, right? One does not equal zero, square root three over two does not equal one half, except at this point here, the angle pi over four. The only place on the unit circle where the value for cosine is equal to the value for sine is at the angle pi over four, where they are both equal to square root two over two. In other words, the only time that this statement right here is true is when two theta is equal to pi over four, because the only time this is true is when sine of pi over four equals cosine of pi over four, right? That's the only angle where that statement is true. So whatever we've got inside the trigonometric identity sine and cosine here needs to be equal to pi over four. So we divide both sides by two to solve for theta, and we get theta equals pi over eight. And pi over eight, in fact, is our intersection point right here. This is the angle pi over eight, where our curves intersect one another. So now that we know that, the easiest way is to find area with limits of integration zero and pi over eight. So we'll get area equals integral from zero to pi over eight. But the important thing to note about that is that the area we're going to find is actually only half of this pedal right here because they intersect at zero, the origin, and it's going to give us this area right here from zero to pi over eight. What that means is that to find total area enclosed by both curves, since we have eight petals and we're only going to find half of one of the petals, that means we're going to need to multiply the area we find by 16. So our area actually becomes the area equals 16 times the integral from 0 to pi over 8. Now, the other important thing to know about this, we have one half in our formula, but when it comes to r, we're looking for which equation for r we need to use. Well, the curve that we're bordering here is this green curve, right? Notice the blue curve bounds the other half of this petal. We're moving here along the green curve, and that's sine of 2 theta. So we need to use sine of 2 theta for r. We could use different limits of integration and possibly use cosine, but since we're using 0 to pi over 8, we need to use sine of 2 theta since the region we're finding here is bounded by this green curve sine of 2 theta. So this is going to be our integral, and now we just need to simplify. We'll go ahead and bring the 1 half out in front because it's a constant coefficient on our sine 2 theta squared value here. So 16 divided by 2 is going to give us 8 out in front. So 8 times the integral from 0 to pi over 8 of sine squared of 2 theta d theta. At this point, we're going to need the double angle formula, which is cosine of 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. We need to solve that for sine squared theta so we can make a substitution. We'll get 2 sine squared theta 
equals one minus cosine of two theta. Dividing both sides by two gives us sine squared theta equals one half minus one half cosine two theta. Now what we know is that we have sine squared theta here. The only important thing to remember is that instead of just a simple theta here, we have two theta, which we're gonna need to plug in. So our integral will become area equals eight times the integral from zero to pi over eight of one half minus one half cosine of two theta, but remember we have to plug in two theta for theta. So two theta times two gives us four theta. And then of course we have d theta. We can factor out a one half and we'll get area equals four times the integral from zero to pi over eight of one minus cosine four theta d theta. And when we take the integral here, we'll get four times theta minus one fourth sine of four theta, and that's a property of chain rule. Remember we take the integral of the outside function cosine, which is sine, leaving the inside function four theta completely alone, but then we have to divide by the derivative of the inside. Since the derivative of this inside function four theta is four, we divide by four like that. So that's our integral, and then we're gonna be evaluating on the interval zero to pi over eight. When we do that, we'll plug in our upper limit of integration first, of course, so we'll get pi over eight minus one fourth times sine of four times pi over eight. Four times pi over eight is just pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one, so this is just one fourth times one. We can leave it as one fourth. And then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero. When we plug in zero to here, we get just zero. Sine of four times zero is sine of zero, and sine of zero is zero, so this whole thing goes away when we plug in zero. We don't need to write that all out. We're just left with this. And now when we distribute our four and simplify, we'll get area equals four times pi over eight will just give us pi over two. And then four times negative one fourth is just negative one. So our total area is pi over two minus one, and that's the area of all eight of these pink leaves because we found area of half of one of them and then multiplied by 16 to get the total area of all the leaves. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.